find some properties of limits so that we can find other limits. All right. Uh, so let's just start with some basic limits. We've already talked about the first two. Okay. B and C are real numbers. They are actual numbers, and n is a positive integer. So if we want to uh, find the limit and take the C of B, B is a constant. So that limit is that constant B always. It doesn't matter what C is. That limit is always the constant that is the function in that case. If our function is x, then our limit is going to be whatever c is. We just plug in c for x and that's that limit. Okay, We've talked about those several times. Uh, the new one here is what if we put a power on x? Well, it's the same thing. It's just that's a polynomial. Okay, you just plug in and that looks like an e, not a c. I apologize, I'm going to fix that. C to the n, all right? We just plug it in. So, really quick, some examples here. Um, the limit as we approach negative 5 of 11, the negative 5 doesn't matter, okay? The 11 is the only thing that matters there. That limit is always going to be 11, regardless of what value you're approaching. The middle one, limit as x approaches 4 of x, that would be 4. The limit as x approaches negative 3 of x to the 4th, well, we're raising negative 3 to the 4th power. Um, so that is uh, 9 times 9. That's 81. Okay, if, you can't, if you don't want to think about 3 to the 4th, if you don't have that memorized, uh, and you don't want to think about 27 times 3, okay, you can break it up. 3 squared times 3 squared, and you get 81. Anytime you raise a negative number to an even power, the result is going to be positive. That's something you should keep back in mind. Okay, now, here's the new stuff. Okay, here's kind of the new stuff. Uh, same setup, B and C are real numbers, they are constants, N is still a positive integer. We've got two functions, F of X and G of X. We don't know what those functions are, but we are told that as we're approaching C, for F of X, the limit is going to be some other number L, and for g of x, it's going to be some other number k. All right, that's the only thing that we know about these two functions are those two specific limits. So we can uh, we can work with this. Okay, you will be asked questions. That I've seen there is at least one question like this every single year on the AP exam um, for you to find. Well, if you're told this, what is the limit of f of x plus g of x? And you don't know what f of x and are, you only know those two limits, so you've got to understand or know that, well, if I'm just adding the two functions together, I can just add their limits together, okay? Uh, with the scalar multiple, we're just going to multiply the limit by whatever that multiple is. So b is a scalar multiple. We've got b times f of x, so that limit is going to be b times the limit l. For the sum or difference, when we're adding the two functions or subtracting, then we add or subtract their limits. You gotta make sure you do it in order. If f of x comes first, you do its limit L. G of x is second, then k comes second, okay, vice versa. Um, okay, we can do it with multiplication, okay? Uh, we just multiply the two limits. So for a product of two functions, then the limit is the product of the limits. These are pretty common sense, but you'd be surprised. Okay, the quotient, you're going to divide them. The only condition is that k is not zero, because then you'd be dividing by zero, and that's a problem. Okay, but as long as k is anything but zero, then you just divide those two limits. And if you have a function raised to a power, then you can just raise the limit to that same power. Now, the next thing, um, I think I added it after, and I keep on forgetting to go back and put it in these notes. So if you want to write it on the right side of that box, um, composite functions. Okay, composite functions. I'm not going to lie, I'm trying to remember if we got to this at the end of pre-calc or not. We may have to go over it a little bit. Um, but 
that's when you're plugging a function into another function. So, Okay, with a, con uh, with a composite function, what is going on is you always start on the inside of that function. So I'm going to step away from limits for a second, um, and I'm going to just talk about, I'm going to tell you that um, f of 8 is equal to 16, and g of 2 is equal to 8. And the question is, what is f of g of 2? Now, I'm really simplifying this. I'm just giving you the, the pieces of information that we really, truly need. Okay? So you start on the inside. You start with g of 2. g of 2 is 8. So we're going to replace g of 2 with 8. And then the question is, what is f of 8? Well, we know that that is 16. So f of g of 2 is equal to Usually what they do with this is they give you a table of values and they give you a bunch of extra stuff that you don't need. So you have to zone in on the information, only the information that's needed um, to, to get that answer. So they can do that with limits as well. So they may give you a, a table of limits or several different limits. But the key is if you're asked to find the limit of a combination of functions, you start on the inside. So you can see kind of how the limit notation the f of function notation. So the limit as x equals g of x, we were told it's l. So we replace that with l. The l comes right here because they're equal to each other. And then we've just got uh, it's equal to whatever f of l is, which we were not told in this case, but you would know that, that you would be told that it's some specific. That's kind of how the composition works. It's a little weird, but you, you'll understand when you see an example with it. All right, so we've also talked about this before. Okay, if a function f of x is continuous uh, at some x value c, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x, we're just going to plug it in. Okay, it's just direct substitution. As long as your function is continuous, then your limit is the value of the function at that point. Okay, it's what we've been doing. When I've asked you what is the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared, you plug in 2, you get 4. All right, that's all of this is, just in uh, notational form as opposed to the real actual numbers and functions. Okay? So, for example, we've got this function. Uh, yeah, I don't have this. This was kind of random extra to explain what I just said. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of x, we're told that f of x is 3x squared plus 5x minus 6, and we're just plugging in negative 2 for x. Okay, that's all that's going on here. So negative 2 squared is 4. That's 12 minus 16. That limit is negative 4. Okay, just direct substitution, plug it in, crunch the numbers. Because 3x squared plus 5x minus 6 is a polynomial, polynomials domain is all real numbers, so they're always continuous. Okay? All right, so let's look at some examples of using these properties when we are just given a single limit. Okay, when we're just given a single limit. Uh, we're told that the limit as x approaches 6 of f of x is equal to 4. We don't know what f of x is. We just know this one specific piece of information about it. So if we're asked what's the limit of f of x squared, then using our power property, we just square the limit. Okay, the limit was equal to 4, so we're going to square that. So this is equal to 16. Example B is just a quotient, okay? So uh, 1 over f of x means we can just put 1 over the limit. So that's equal to 1 fourth. It really is just that straightforward. 
okay? Uh, now, be careful here with C. C is x times the square root of f of x. So the limit as x approaches 6 of x is 6, okay? Use that property. The limit as x approaches some number of x is that number, okay? So that's where the 6 comes from. And then uh, the square root of f of x means that we're going to take the square root of its limit, so the square root of 4, so that's 6 times 2. This limit is equal to 12. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because the limit is equal to 4, this is asking, just look at this part, the limit of x approaches 6 of x. Look at example three. This time we're, we've got two functions interacting with each other. We know the limit as x approaches negative four of f of x is three, and the limit as x approaches negative four of g of x is equal to one. Let's find these limits when we combine them. f of x times g of x, we should go to multiply their limits. So that's three times one, which is three. B is just a little linear combination, so 2 times f of x, so 2 times 3, plus 3 times g of x, which was 1, so that's 6 plus 3, which is 9. Okay. Here's another example where we're going to have to use multiple properties. Okay, It's a quotient, so g of x is on top, so its limit is 1. The bottom is the polynomial x squared. So we're going to plug in negative 4 for x and square it. So this answer is 1 16th. Okay, they will throw polynomials in these problems um, along with some function that all we know is that specific limit about. So you've got to know those properties. And then D is just a whole bunch of stuff going on here. F of X plus 1. So uh, F of X, the limit is 3. We're just going to add 1 to that. 3 times G of X minus 9. So that's 4 over 3 minus 9 is negative 6. Simplify, that's negative 2 over 3. Okay. 